to It's Settled with Stephanie Lyles. I am very excited to have Matthew Brown here with us today. Matthew, you want to say hello and introduce yourself? Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Matthew Brown. Yeah. <laughs> the insurance agent, as most people the say. The one and only. The one and only. So you have, a, you have a, a name that can be easily abbreviated. So do I. So does it stress you out or freak you out when you hear somebody call you Matt or Matthew or vice versa? It doesn't be, but my mother, like, she will correct somebody as fast as possible. Like, it is. If you call me Matt, uh -huh. uh, no, sir. Uh, I named him Matthew. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, she, she's very quick on that. Gotcha. Well, fast. and I, um, if I hear somebody call me Stephanie instead of Steph, I automatically go on the defense because yeah. I'm like, Somebody's calling my full name. It sounds very formal, or like I'm getting in trouble for something. Well, I'm used to being in trouble. So yeah, <laughs> exactly. So we were actually just sitting here, kind of talking about um, in our industries, respective industries, which are closely related. Yeah. Yours being insurance, mine being mortgage. Talking about boundaries and how setting those is real important. You have to. I mean, I like we were saying earlier, like. In your younger days, I was like, all right, hustle, 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 uh, try to get as many deals as possible. I'll, oh, you, you want that name. And then you start realizing that five o'clock hour rolls into six, six rolls into seven, and so forth. And it's like, you have no life. This, right. the, the business is your life. So then you start thinking like, man, do I work for the business or does the business work for me? Right. And man, you've got to set those boundaries. Uh, and I feel like we do a good job. You know, uh -huh. Samantha's like, she is the controller of our house. All right. The, all the guys, like, I wear the pants. Yeah. You know. Everybody well, knows it's yeah. actually the women oh, that keep things right. I literally said that the other Hello. day. Hello. And, and here's the deal. In, in our world, most of the time, we're talking to the wife. It's right. making the financial decisions yep. for that household. And, um, and the same goes for us. Most of the time, like our point of contact for a loan application, it's going to be yeah. uh, the female partner. 100%. Yeah. It's changed. Mm -hmm. And just for the audience, uh, I actually work with Matthew's wife. That is yeah. Samantha. So, we did a previous episode with her. And uh, she is um, just obviously way too awesome for Matthew. Oh, I have kicked my coach by a long shot. <laughs> but you know, I say she out kicked hers too. I, I mm -hmm. wake up, look at myself, I'm like, yeah, you did pretty good for yourself. So That's right. Okay. Yeah. But hey, you, know? you gotta give yourself some credit too. Yeah. Or if you don't have, you know, if you don't have any kind of self value, you gotta, oh, yeah. you gotta push what you're bringing to the table. Oh, you try to. But you know, you're, when we're talking about like setting boundaries and being in a commission-based or production-based business where you're kind of responsible for bringing in the deals, um, it seemed, I remember in the early years when I felt like I had this sense of urgency as if, well, if I'm not working 24-7, I might miss out on an opportunity and that's going to set me back. And so I really had to realize if I have nothing left of myself to give, You're then spent. I'm more apt to miss You're opportunities. Spent. And most of the people that you want to do business with, they already respect the boundaries. Right. So it's like the people that if I you, want to align with, yes, they already get it. That is such a good point because I have really repeated this a lot. Um, don't make someone else's failure to plan your emergency. Yeah. If someone hasn't gone out and tried to get pre-approved before they go house hunting on a Saturday night and then want to make an offer on a Sunday morning, that is not a true emergency. Or That's some, lack of planning. Or if someone that calls at four o'clock or four o'clock or five o'clock on a Friday, like, hey, we're closing on this house on Monday. Right. Like, hold up now, I'm, I'm Saturday is my, my family time. Sunday, like I'm out, like we'll get to it. Mm -hmm. And it'll be right, but... But in your sense, y'all are dealing with stuff like no, real right. disasters yeah. where you could have loss of life or property in it. the real sense. I've seen it. I mean, it's uh, people, don't, people don't want to talk about it. You know, they don't want to talk about what they've seen. I mean, I've dealt with, I can't tell you countless young people that have lost their life texting and driving. And they're like, all right, it's the EMTs, the police are, man, they see a lot of bad stuff. Yeah. 
but we have to follow that whole process out with the adjuster and mm -hmm. then you start looking at your kids and it's like man like did you really need to respond to that text message i know it just gives it's me sad. chills because it's so easy to happen you know yeah. and then you've got like the everything just changes in a split second um yeah nobody nobody wants a lot of the young people are invincible hell i was that way I, know. I mean, I never thought anything would happen to me. I, I know. And ran and did my whole thing, and I uh, think we kind of had it a little bit easier because iPhones didn't exist and oh we God. were not trackable. Dude, <laughs> so, dude, there were some videos of me back in the day. I know. Oh, yeah. So, do you know how parents got a hold of kids when they were running around when I was in high school? They called Pizza Hut. To see if you were up there? Well, because everybody would cruise town and Pizza Hut was the turnaround. And most of us worked at Pizza Hut at some point. <laughs> so they would call Pizza Hut. To be Hutt, in the group, you just had to buy an application. The guys would like stick their head out the, the drive through window and see if we were out there in the parking lot and some of those moms on the phone. Well, I mean, I grew up in Gillette. It literally had one a very, very small town, Southeast Arkansas. One road, we drove Main Street, you circled at one end and came back down to the other. Right. Like, they, there was no, like, Live 360 or any of that. Like, no. literally a mom would call another mom, hey, look out your window if you see that truck coming. Right. But, man, do you, everybody talks about the good old days. I mean, it was awesome. Small town living. There, it was there's awesome. There's something to be said about it. And driving for the sake of driving. <laughs> yeah. And burning just, gas because it's like rolling. 88 cents a gallon, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean... Let's go, Brandon, on that one. Way to go there. Seriously. Um, oh, my God. This. But, you know, kids these days are even reluctant to get their driver's license. Are you seeing this? <clears throat> yeah, they're older and older, and they're not really incentivized to drive. I think what I get more frustrated with is the lack of, not all young people are this way, just some that we see, just that lack of... Um, urgency like right uh, i'll do like pure laziness i know like get off your ass <clears throat> and let's 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 go do it you know what i think has caused most of that social media oh, yeah. all right <clears throat> you grew up in a very small town i grew up in a very small yeah. town and what did we do when school was out uh, we couldn't see our friends because they lived like two towns over and we couldn't drive do you remember the old yahoo messenger uh Oh, good. yes, but I was already like an adult when that yeah. came out, so right, well, we didn't have internet until I, I can remember somebody setting my Facebook up for me in like freshman year of college. <laughs> yeah, yes, well, and it was space. actually just for people in college, at yeah, that point. it wasn't, it wasn't yeah. widespread, and it, yeah, well, now you gotta watch out what you. I mean, there's some sick people out there. There really are, but I think because these kids are in constant contact with each other all the time and your kids are still real young but you'll see this as they get older they are constantly facetiming uh texting snapchatting my daughter facetimes her friends and they get ready together for school oh lord i mean so there's no alone time exactly so they don't ever miss their friends they're not ever chomping at the bit to leave home to go see humans well, and there's also the, the lack of communication skills. I mean, you've interviewed people, I interview people all the time, and it's just like, oh, if it's you can terrible. look me in the eye, that'd be great, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, or we can text each other if you mm -hmm. want to on the side, you know, on the right. side. But dude, they just have no, like... There's a whole lot of accommodation that's expected, too. Oh, from the younger <clears throat> years? Hey, yeah, yeah, like, well... Like, they're doing you a favor. Yeah, for you sure. Know? Right. Like, all right. Uh, and they want they want an obscene <laughs> amount of money to start a, an entry-level <laughs> job. Like, okay. Right. Yeah. I, I, it, it's a wear out. It's a wear out. It really is. But you can't do it without it. You can't. you got to have the employees. you got to have, and you got to have good people. I have, I have great people. Mm -hmm. If you've ever been in my office, like, the people that work for me are amazing. But I take like Cameron for example. You know, he started with me when he was 15 years old. Mm -hmm. He's never held a job, never done a you know job interview. Like this is what he knows. Mm -hmm. And I have I have busted his ass multiple times. I right. can, I remember one time 
a smart, smart, smart way to do this. He gets pulled over on Main Street down here. And the police officer pulls him over. First thing Cameron says is, hey, I sent the ID cards to you the other day. He wanted that police officer to know who he is. Put the connection. Yeah, let's, let's, let's let that go. So the police officer did, but he called me. He called me. I was in bed. And, uh, and he goes, hey, just let you know, uh, Cameron did a U-turn in the middle of Main Street. Like, come on, man. <laughs> and he goes, ah, he's got a couple boys with him. So I called Cameron. And then he, he, he changed his, his word. He was like, he picks up the phone and he goes, hello. <laughs> like, I, like, I'm not calling you at 1030 right. night to talk to you at 15, 16 years old. He's like, hello. And I was, or, yes, like, well, this yeah, is yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, sir. And I'm like, you got 15 minutes for me to hear those busted pipes you got on this FJ Cruiser come because we, or his parents lived over here. Uh, we were on Hudson Branch, so you know, maybe a couple houses yes. now. And he had to come to the four way, and you could hear Cameron. He had, oh, wow. he had like <clears throat> speakers in the back, and and I don't know if he had pipes or he. He uh, did the redneck version of putting a hole in his tailpipe. It, it sounded like a pissed off weed eater. Like, oh, he, I remember. He, he, he had come over and oh. called one of Skyler's friends out of the ditch one night. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> and then he was like, uh, yes, sir. I said, you've got 15 minutes to have your ass at your house, or I'm getting up out of bed and I'm coming to get you. Like, that was my and his relationship when he was younger. But, but you don't hardly see that anymore. Like, and I hope you do. I, maybe I just am close to it. Like, Older people trying to take the younger people and say, and, right? Like, because it, there well, is, it takes a village, it does take a village, right? But the biggest thing is, he's like, you know, on the job training is invaluable. Oh, yeah, his first that, job assignment was to pick up sticks in my yard. So, that well, is, that is, now I will say that is very unrelated to insurance. He's done a good job, yeah, he's a, he's a damn good He agent. is awesome, he's a good kid, he is. Really. Um, but there is nothing that I've learned in any amount of schooling, really, that has helped me out in this particular job. No. I mean, I think what education does is it shows you're committed to investing in yourself. Yeah, the shoes, right? You can have the discipline for it, but there is a there is a huge, huge difference between like education and knowledge. Those are not interchangeable. You know, I did, um, we were looking at, like, my office. Just earlier I said, I, I feel like I have the best team. Mm -hmm. Not one person in my office has a degree, a college sheet of paper. None of that. But they're they're reliable, they're honest, they're... Mm -hmm. Yes. They're going to do... <clears throat> like Krista, our processor. Mm -hmm. She could probably be an attorney. Yeah. Like, we, we joke, if, if it... If it Things fall apart for us in mortgage. We will make one heck of a private investigator. Like if mortgage fell out, what would you be? Hmm. I, I Samantha asked me the other day, what would I do? I would be a farmer. I'd be a plant lady. Uh, I would do crafts. Uh, Samantha would do crafts, <laughs> but we would be so so impoverished from my craft sales. Yeah, I'd probably be a school teacher. My you'd mother, be a good. You would be mother, a good teacher. It would have to be history, though, because so my dad history. taught history for thirty years: American history and Arkansas history yeah. and geography. I would be a. I would be a school teacher. So you have the good story. Uh, you've got the good storytelling ability, and I think that that is what <laughs> makes people a good history teacher. Most of the way is full of shit. <laughs> so. No, seriously though, <laughs> if you can tell. If you can relay information in a way that's relatable to people, yeah. like that's why I'm, I feel like everybody loved my dad. I had him in eighth grade history. And you didn't feel the same? <laughs> I thought, no, he was an awesome teacher. And it's because like the whole Civil War and the Reconstruction, oh. he made it so interesting. And we got so into it. And then well, I... What do you think people don't go do what they wanted to well, want to do? Because I don't think that they know how to figure out what they want to do early in life. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think a lot of people... I buy your crafts. I know you would buy my crafts, <laughs> but that's not going to... It's like you know, it's pay like, the bills. Right, it's like, go sponsor my Etsy shop. <laughs> so I... <laughs> 
So I have health insurance. Yeah. I, t- I told Samantha what she should do. Have you ever seen her make a wreath and like her, her no. artistic skills? I didn't know about this. She better be making me a wreath it's, for Thanksgiving. It's unreal of what she could do. Like the next Curly Willow style. Like it's un. Why did I not know this? I mean, she's Here's what I'm going to do. We've got a little spare office. I'm going to bring some tools up here. You ought to just try her out. We have a wreath slash work, you know, wood shop. Yeah. <laughs> you should do <laughs> mortgage wood shop. <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> a few years ago, I got really into woodworking. This is hilarious. Because. Uh, I got on this big tirade about the cost of furniture that was junk. Oh, yeah. And I was like, this is not even solid wood. This is the stupidest, cheapest, dumbest ripoff. And so I was like, I'm going to learn how to build it. And so there's a couple of women that were, one of them, I think her name was like Anna. I don't even remember, but I followed these girls on YouTube. And you could download plans and everything. And I actually built some cool stuff. Like a little side table and a desk. A several little, you know, just stands. But it was hilarious because me and Blake would get, like, we would go to fisticuffs over my scrap wood collection. Yes. And he's like, where is it coming from? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to have everything like <laughs> I'm mm. borderline OCD, so if I walked into a place where like so like Sam's making a wreath, that's stressing you out. Oh, there's fluff everywhere. Oh, and then the uh, what is it? The sparkles and like the glitter. Yeah, it gets in the ridges of the floor. Oh, it irritates the hell out of me. So every Christmas, glitter just ha- appears when it's you're still decorating. There. Still, there. you're putting anything up. There's gonna be glitter if it's Christmas. So are you going around like with vacuum cleaner? Oh, Oh, one hundred. I know it annoys the hell out of her, but you know she she knows. Like I can only take so much. Like I'll go into the laundry room, and I don't know how you are, but our, me and Samantha are both in this. We'll do the laundry. All right, Sunday we're up. We're gonna do the laundry. We do the laundry. We fold it, but we set it in the room, and it stays there. Mm-hmm. For I mean, we there's no reason for closets anymore. To no, ask. like just make a big line. All right, so Matthew, my son is eleven. He'll be twelve in March, and I promise you that kid has never utilized a dresser or a closet. It's just in the floor. And so I said, Lucas, no, he keeps it in the laundry room. Well, that's smart kid. It's Everybody all just like it. folded up right there, and he'll just go yeah. get it. And so I was like, son, it's we're gonna turn over a new leaf and we're gonna organize your closet before school starts. I was like, Mom, why? When I could just leave it right here and it's all there. That's the way I mean it's logic. But that's everybody. Yeah. You know, I mean you go like there's no reason. Right. No reason. There really isn't, because think about it. Why? You're so, you're either gonna be wearing it or it's gonna be being washed. And then it's so frustrating, like this morning, like Lawson. Uh, my son wanted to uh, it's game day. He let me know that first thing this morning. He's gonna wear his jersey. Well, it's like I go in there, I don't know where his jersey is, and somebody's like, just go to the laundry room. And I'm like, because I've gone through every drawer, looked through the closet, nothing's there. Why don't I think? Just go to the laundry room. Exactly. We don't ever put anything up, it's in the laundry room. No. Well, know. and I mean, I. Teenagers are just another story. I don't know how. I, I thought, how am I going to do? How am I? How am I going to be when Nora becomes a teenager? Yeah, it gets how really. How am I going to do when that boyfriend shows up? It's very, very stressful. It's like taking your prized possession and handing it to a gorilla. <laughs> yeah. Well, what do you say to that? That is the feeling. I think one of the best <clears throat> movies that portrays that is the movie with 50 Cent where his daughter's going on the prom date or whatever. Yes. And he walks and let me talk to you for a second. And he opens the door and it's like 25 of these big boat up guys. And he tells him, he goes, you know, she's been a responsibility of mine for the last 17 years. I'm giving the responsibility to you for the next two hours. If something happens to her, your mother will feed you from a spoon. Exactly. <laughs> like, for real. And that's kind of how you have to be. But the best, like, uh, I think, 
maybe prevention against that is just knowing people in the town where you live. Oh, 100. Because if you know other people, see, my kids realize we've already had other kids that we've raised and have gone through Cabot schools. We know the teachers. We know everybody and their parents. We're going to know. If something happens, we're going to find out about it. They have never been able to get away with anything. And they have seen our older kids get busted and appropriately punished for the dumbest stuff. Yeah. So now our younger kids are like, hmm. I might not want to do this. Exactly. I might have taken it easy. Right, right. so if you know everybody and you know, hey, they're going to tell my parents. Yeah. Uh, Samantha w- w- is kind of like the enforcer on that. I probably, I probably feed into the drama with Nora. Definitely Nora. Uh, yeah. Uh, she's more like me. She comes in this morning. She's got her chest bow out. And she's like, "Look at me, Dad." <laughs> and I'm like, "What? What are you doing?" She's like, "It's game day." Well, that's yeah. But as tough as she is, when the panther comes out, you know the that's mascot. Like oh, she! I have literally seen her run. Like and hide, like she's terrified of it. So I was like, "What happened?" That thing does. It's it's like its head's really small. It's weird looking to me. I mean, I imagine like a little kid that would be scary. Yeah, it's it's so yeah. I'm not a big Halloween. Now I am dress up person. Like I don't know how y'all like Halloween parties. Oh. I, Halloween has always been my favorite holiday since I was a kid. I love Halloween. Yeah, so me and Samantha have been talking like what because we now we do like a family dress up. Mm-hmm. Like I think last year we were a uh, Little Mermaid because uh, that's definitely what Nora picked, and then yeah. before that we we're Marvels. Uh, but I want to do one thing. I've been seeing online where this guy can mold you into like a super older person's face that would terrify her well i want to do it like in rape like just walk in here like and try to get them more that time. would freak your kids out so bad it's gonna be funny it would it scare would, them it, so and so we're going like, to, we, have, we have, and i'm probably giving this away because i'm not doing it but we're going we've got invited to this uh adult halloween party uh-huh. where, you know and you know dress up as right or whatever and I'm thinking to myself, God, I want to dress up to like a super older person and act like I'm at the wrong place in the city. Come in with a cane. Yeah. And, 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 have you seen this? <clears throat> yes. Oh. They're right. so realistic. Oh, it's super realistic. But I just want to show up to the party, have Samantha go in and be like, Matthew could make you sick or something. And then me walk in like, you know, 30 minutes later and be like, oh, I'm at the wrong house. Like, you see what, how people act. <laughs> like, it's just, can I get a drink? Right. I'm <laughs> <You're laughs> like, guys, like, who brought gramps and from the nursing home? Start down. <laughs> uh, I yeah. mean, and nobody would probably even think it was weird. Not, not in today's world, but I mean, I think it'd be funny. It I mean, would be pretty hilarious. I, I like to do things like that. I tell you, I I probably pester Samantha more than the kids do. Like, I love the whole pranks and things. But she got me good the other day. I was in the shower. I was super oh, do- dog tired, and I just turned it off, reaching for the towel, and then just I get drenched with ice cold water. <laughs> and it, it was like I went from like go Sam. Like you think to yourself, like, I'm so mad, and I'm like, hell, one up, one and oh, you're it. Because how many times have exactly. I done like? This? What are you gonna do? You're in the shower, dripping wet. Oh. I mean, you're not yeah. going to be able to react quickly. So, yeah, I think it's the ideal yeah, ambush. But, I, 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 but hey, look, revenge is sweet, and I've got to, I've got to come up with something um, to do. I got one of my and uh, one of my employees. Uh, I had Shayla go to the police department because she was uh, off work and take a Snapchat, and it was like I didn't want to end my Friday this way, and then they. Another employee had called her and told her that I got into it with somebody at the office and then I got arrested just to see if she and she drove all the way from Bustler Rock back. What? Yeah. You can ask her that one. That <laughs> so who were you pranking? Uh Demi. Uh and So she's thinking the whole time. The right? whole time that Matthew's in jail, like and she starts hyperventilating. like she's like, Well we gotta call Samantha. What do you think Samantha's gonna say? <laughs> <laughs> 
done some, and I like those types of uh, just oh just my little God, pranks. Not a big deal. I know, but it's so like when you keep it going, I, it get, it gets really really funny. I think it does. Yeah, one hundred percent. And you should be that way. Yeah, uh, we had uh, one of our friends. He's a big old guy. We had him, he had this gorilla suit one Halloween. <clears throat> and this is when Skylar and Kenzie were like, probably in sixth grade. We used to have a big Halloween party for the kids every year until they got too old for that to be realistically That's possible. Not fun anymore. Exactly. So uh, Matt came, this was a different Matt, but he had this gorilla suit on. And we had him go hide in the girl's closet. Oh, God, that was Because they, they shared a bedroom at the time. That was, no. And, I mean, it was so hard for us to wait not say anything. But Skylar walked in there, and I have never seen anybody sprint from the back to the front of the house as fast as she did. <laughs> oh, I would, I would have probably passed out. Yeah, but I'm thinking back, and I'm like, you know, that is kind of traumatizing for a sixth-grade yeah, girl to have. <laughs> have this huge gorilla yeah. jumping out of her closet. Talk about a costume and and uh, traumatizing. So Cameron, uh, sixteen, maybe seventeen, and you go back to living in a you know, relatively small town. Y'all know a bunch of people. We know a bunch of people. I know a ton of the school teachers. And Cameron got into it with his girlfriend. At lunch, you heard this? Mm -mm. Oh, this, you got to get Cameron to tell you the story. <laughs> Cameron, you got to tell this on the podcast. No, it, it is <laughs> hilarious. I had a Mario costume because back in our non-kid days, mm -hmm. me and Samantha, unbeknownst to a lot of people, we were groupies to the to the band Moon Taxi. Uh -huh. And we would follow them on Halloween. They would have concerts and we would dress up. They had specific places they would play and you had to come to their concert. One of them was Game of Thrones. One of them was Mario Kart. And like, so we had all the costumes. I had a Mario co car, uh, Mario costume in the office. I get a phone call from a school teacher. I don't know why I didn't call his parents. And, and I'm sorry, uh, Chef Candace. Hopefully you know about this. If not, let's just act like it never was talked about. So this is him and his girlfriend? Yeah. Okay. At the okay. time, they got into it in the cafeteria, and Cameron uh, lost his cool just a little bit and said some things he probably shouldn't have said. I get a phone call. To the office and Shayla answers like hey you want to get on this phone call and I'm like okay what's going on and they're like so Cameron got in trouble at school and I'm like oh yeah and they're like I'm getting deeper into the conversation he said what okay I'll handle that and I tell Shayla I said you tell him when he gets in the office you know here's big brother or whatever that you don't log into your computer I'll be out to talk to you. If you've been in my office, and he is not that big. Like, when I say, wait in the lobby, <laughs> what lobby? Uh, which we are going to build a new office, which I'm looking forward to that. But, but don't log me. Yeah. But he, he's standing there, and, and to him, he's like, I don't know what, uh, I don't know what's going on. And Shayla had no idea. And I come around the corner, like, all oh, hot, man. Like, did this happen? He was like, and then he knew he was in trouble. He was like, yes, sir, I did this. And, I said, nobody speaks to a woman that way, you know, nowhere. I said, you see that I had the Mario costume laid out? I said, no, this is good. I said, you're gonna put that Mario costume on. And he goes, I'm not putting that costume on. Oh, you're putting this costume on. So I got him in the Mario costume. I'm talking about hat, beard, the white, big, fluffy gloves, everything. And it was about 3.05, 3.10, somewhere around there. School was letting out. And all his buddies, they take Lily Ann to get on Main Street. Because mm -hmm. it's wall-to-wall -wall traffic. Like, right. If you're not... Because your I, office is right there uh, by the high school. By the high school. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> they're all there. And there's like a, maybe the length of this desk right here of a sidewalk. And I told him, you're going to go, and you're going to take your ass out there in this Mario costume, and you're going to wave at all the people that drive by. You know, like those people that are like Little Caesars that spend the... Yep. He was mortified. I mean, and you're going to do it for zero dollars. Well, I, I, take, <laughs> I did, I made a mistake. I was like, for every honk you get, you get like five dollars. Should not have done that. Because they all no, know. No, that incentivizes him. Yeah, and, and then it turned into him enjoying it, but I still have that costume, though. Yeah. Uh, I may, 
I may wear that one day. Too. Well, you need to save it in case you need to make Lawson wear it someday. Yeah. I feel like Lawson. Uh, it's time for the Mario suit. So here we go, son. You're gonna, you're gonna have to learn a hard <laughs> hopefully, lesson. <laughs> hopefully, Cameron's still with me by then, and, and, and I can, you can look at Cameron and ask him how this works. But you're not getting paid anything. Cameron got paid. You, you're not getting paid. So, but you're like, I, I too am a little more experienced I, now. I'm traumatized by all of it. Oh my God, I can't believe I did that to him. I mean, nowadays parents would go. Nuts. That's still hilarious, though. And uh, the best thing would have been if his girlfriend drove by and saw him in the Mario suit waving. Yeah, I don't know how that, clearly that didn't pan out. That was, you know, early high school days. Right. right. That's, that's I've, hilarious, I've, though. I've lived with Cameron uh, pretty much his whole life. <laughs> so, uh, I can't wait for uh, his wedding rehearsal dinner where people stand up and exactly. speak. Oh, mine's going to be good. Yeah, you're like, son, I've been I, keeping a folder in my phone of notes. Oh, no, we have a, in the office a book of Cameron, the words that he he says and, and how he, one day he come in, he went to Hot Springs with his, his buddies, and he goes, boss, you will not believe where we stayed. And I'm like, well, where did you stay? He goes, Airbnb. I'm like, well, that's not special. <laughs> but then he Which one? Well, yeah. <laughs> he goes, they had a boudin. <laughs> A boudini? A, a, a boudi or something. <laughs> How he said it was a bidet. And I said, well, what'd you do? He goes, it was awesome. He was like, the water squirts up. And like, I can envision him standing over the toilet, hitting the button just to watch the water. Right. Come. And the way he says it, it's just like, uh. Oh my Lord. <laughs> he's, he's great. Uh, Everly, that's our, our girl. She just turned 15. One day, she said, oh, I'm putting that in the note. Like she takes a diary. And I was like, what? Because I, I said something. I don't even remember what it was. And she's like dying. It's the most ridiculous thing she's ever heard. She's just laughing. And she's, I'm putting that in the note. She has a, a family quote oh, note really? that she's been keeping in her phone for three years. And it is the most ridiculous stuff that all of us have said. I'm gonna say Blake has more in there than you. He's got some. Yeah, he's got some hilarious some ones. ones. Yeah. Like, um, scratch my back because uh, there was one of them, and he said, "Scratch my back because this door frame won't reach it." <laughs> <laughs> and she, she was like going in the notes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my dad, he actually took a, a journal uh, every day. People used to do that like religiously. Yeah. And I it's think actually it's, pretty cool. It is. Back and read, I can read it's a what, record. what he wrote when I was born. Exactly. And like and special events. It's pretty cool. Um, but it's also, I mean, they can use that as evidence. And um, did you know journals have are used in a lot of cases. court cases? Mm -hmm. If somebody keeps a regular journal. I mean, I've been in... Then I can been, use that to support. I've been thoroughly invested mentally in the... Uh, and I never did this before, but the Murdoch, the... Oh, oh girl. I know. I watched that. Like, honestly, I probably didn't work for like four days. Like, I was in the I office know. like... It gets... Some of those cases really get in your head. Like, and if you watch... You know, he's, they're trying to get him off. Yes, but here's the thing. So, I'm a reader. I don't really like watching stuff. I want to gather the facts, read them, know what's going on, and then I'll, then I'll do the, the video yeah. stuff. So, this whole time, I'm like, oh, this guy's guilty. What a piece he is, yeah. you know? And then I start watching the trial. He's good. Yeah. He was better than the prosecutor. Oh, he was real good. And then I start, I'm like... He didn't do it. I told Sam I, I, like, I don't think he did it because then I, I, get, I go to the point of going out in my Ranger because you know they said that he did he, he might have shot him from the Ranger. I'm like, well, that bullet trajectory would be like, here. Mm -hmm. and I'm just doing the full redneck version right. of, of trying to figure out a crime scene. And I know. It's like, and I then mean, you're they said in like it. his <clears throat> they they rec they did voice recognition software extracted his voice from one of those audio recordings. Yeah. So then I'm like, wait, could it potentially have been a relative of his and that because they're related? Oh my god. And then I'm like, wait, he's pulling the mind trick on me. I got it. Did you see his uh, the interview that they did with Buster? I haven't son? seen that one yet. 
I saw some snips of it. Uh-huh. I don't, his son doesn't think he did it. He no. said he's a psychopath, but he did not do it. Yeah, I'm, I've moved on to the, what is it, the Gildo Beach serial killer that they caught. The guy yeah. up in uh, uh, New York, yeah, was it? New Jersey, I think it was. And what about the escaped yeah. murderer? Did you see his picture? He's in the Philadelphia Eagles. I was hoping he'd be in a Cowboys uh, full of I can't see. I didn't, but did you see how he escaped? Yeah, he, he, he like... Yeah. Vaulted himself yeah. up above the door. And like, were, a, like an elite gymnast. <laughs> yeah. He's but, like that dude on uh, The Hangover. Uh, when. The, yeah. The, oh, no, uh, it was um, where they're spoofing like Ocean's Eleven. But my deal was, so he had a split second. That door swung open. Someone walks out. He's, you know, impaled above it. You only got a split second to right. drop down so nobody hears it. My luck, I would be hit the door halfway right. and fell over. This guy has obviously been in and out of some facilities. Uh, or he's <laughs> well trained. He's not exactly who they think he is. Exactly. This is something else that freaked me the heck out. Bad. So, was it in Pennsylvania where he escaped? Yeah, I think so. All right, so he busts out of prison and he breaks into these people's house. He's downstairs. The husband and wife and kids are asleep upstairs, and the wife looks over at the husband, she's like, I think somebody's downstairs. So the husband says, there's a place in the hallway where you can flip the light switch, and it will turn on the kitchen lights. And he said, and I I flashed the light three times real fast. And he flashed it back at him. The murderer, that's, that's, and he stole their rifle, and then just like calmly walked out. Man, you talk about a bad. One. What was the the guy that's on trial for just gruesomely uh, the college? What is it, Idaho? Oh, oh that 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 fact, man, that one, that it, one got me. Where it, I it took. Sleep. A, it, I guarantee you, it took a lot of people because you don't think kids up there. Like, Brian what's, Colbert. Colbert, what sick individual! Like, I know. Yeah. But, but it's so so crazy how they caught him too. Mm-hmm. And now they're trying like here's where mine's going with this though. My mind. He's you know, there's speculation that he's gonna plead like or he did plead not guilty. Yeah. How? Yeah. How? Who else could have done it? Didn't they find like uh the sh- Sheath of the knife. Sheath of the knife. There was so much stuff. But I remember I'd come home and like tell Samantha about all the podcasts I was doing. And then I know in her mind she's like, are you working? Like I am, but I'm like, listen <laughs> to, to this. Yeah. Too. Like, Let me tell you, uh, Krista, she gets on, she follows a lot of crime cases. Yeah, you got to start sharing this stuff with me. I mean, she, she knows all all of the murderers that go on. But what if, are you following this case? But what if we are uh, falling into the trap? Because you think you think there's any more innocent to proven guilty? Because now people go on social media and just ramsack you and they don't even know you. I don't know. But this really was eye-opening because I've been watching this documentary about Stephen Avery. Did you watch Making a Murderer mm. on Netflix? No. Well... If you haven't watched it, it will suck you in. And at the end of it, you will be like, this guy is innocent and has been wrongly accused twice. Wrongly accused twice. Well, now they're looking into it. And it's showing like how much spin was put on that just for the sake of that Netflix series for the sensationalism to make him look like he was actually wrongfully accused and convicted and put behind bars. Right. Feel sorry for him as right. A but now that the facts are actually being dug into, all of them, not just some of them, this guy is an absolute monster. <laughs> yeah. I mean, take the potential murderer out of the equation. He's a freaking horrible human being. Man, there's a lot of them. Yeah, That's, there really is. But we're on the same page. Yeah. Like I, I deeply divest my time into 
<laughs> you know why? Like I said a while ago, if, if stuff doesn't make sense to me, I have a real hard time just letting it sit with me. And I think that it's the same thing because human behavior, mm-hmm. like it, some, it's so bizarre how somebody could do that. Yeah. And it's so foreign to me that I think that's what's intriguing about it. It's like I've got to know the motive and I have to figure out why because it don't make no sense. Mm-hmm. Like how could somebody literally butcher their entire family? Well, that's, that's, you know? that's just that's just pure evil. That's it is. The, that's the devil. Yeah, it ab- it absolutely is. Um, but I've al- always been like a very suspicious person, you know, because Blake. Do you says, befriend people easy or no? No, I'm very Blake does. Blake, oh, yeah. he's super. Um, he's really open. Yeah. He's, he's open to whatever people are willing to like give on the front end as far as their energy. And he's like, yeah, I'll talk to you. I'll get to know and get to engage here. And I'm like really closed off. Yeah, I right. assume everybody is a psychopath, <laughs> you know? Samantha thought I was on one of our first dates, uh, which was a lunch date. <laughs> I think it was, oh, uh, dude, she texted her bank, or she was working at first service bank. Text them and like I don't know if she like took a picture of my vehicle or something of that nature and was like, hey, if I don't return back, you know, I'm meeting yeah. this random guy. Fully understand it now. That's very smart. Mm-hmm. But I picked the worst place to eat ever, and it's not because it's a bad place. It's because I ordered. I never forget. I, I griped the whole time. Like if I was her, I wouldn't go on the same day. Like, but I ordered a chicken Caesar salad and the chicken came out like cold. Like. Now, hang on just no, but is it the salad itself cold? Yeah, but I mean, the chicken, the meat should be warm and not like... But doesn't that make the lettuce warm? Yeah, I mean, See, I I'm guess not really everybody has their, I mean, you're either a mustard or ketchup guy. I mean, I want my I'm not chicken. really a salad person, so I, I guess no, I'm... not a rabbit. Yeah. I guess I would want my chicken the same temperature as the lettuce. Well, I mean, it was cold, like ice cold. Like and they I had literally the pulled time. it out of the refrigerator and threw it oh, in there. Oh, 100%. I was like, who orders it? Who eats this stuff? And like, <laughs> instead of like, hey, how are you? Where are you from? I'm <laughs> more pissed off about my salad. <laughs> and I don't even eat salad. So yeah, like, and by the way, uh, she's not like, she's knocked down or knocked out gorgeous. Mm-hmm. And you're griping about your salad. Yeah. Samantha. A terrible person. We need to talk about this Yeah. Morning. There were red flags in the beginning. Like, why didn't you pick up on that? I blame you now. Like, no, we're too far into this now. We're not going back. But I do give you snaps on the lunch date. Because Blake and I, our first date, well, I stood him up three times. Oh, yeah? And then we finally went on a date. We went to lunch. But I told him before, a lunch date is a perfect first date. Because you have an excuse, I have limited time, I have to be back at work. Uh-huh. So there's no pressure if there's it goes badly. Exactly. You don't have to deal with the potential of alcohol being drank and then kind of making things go places that you don't want it to. Oh, I can do You know, and so it's just a really good way to break the ice. I, I, I wholeheartedly support the lunch date first date. You ought to ask Samantha about the second date at Garth Brooks. <laughs> so I'm guessing to her, there point, might her mother was here. like, he's never going to call you back. Oh, on her behalf. On her behalf. I think it was the fact that, all right, we're out of our comfort zone. Yep. Don't no worry about that. This one's good. Let's just say Samantha, I don't know, you know, maybe the nervous ticks to it that she was like, here's my first. And I, was, and I brought her with all of my friends. So we're all ever. So oh, no. Well, then this is what it, happened. Oh, 100. You She's are, around a bunch of dudes and it, she was well, trying to girl, match she, y'all. Uh, I think you got to really get get to the story on this one. Maybe she outdid y'all. Uh, oh, she outdid us, all right. She, she went way outdid us. But, so I was driving her back to her mother's house, and I had, you know, my buddies in the back, and, and we pull up to the car, and, and, and it was as if, I mean, how do, you, how do I word this? She, she got out of that car 
as fast as I've ever seen anybody get out of the pickup truck. She just was it gravity helping her, or did she? Oh uh, no, it was like I don't even know if she knew she was at her mother's house. She just I mean I could pull up to her house and she got out. Just like bolted and ran. She bolted up. She goes, all right, see ya, and gone. She was inside, and a buddy of mine he goes. I remember she getting the door shut, and it was just like dead. I was literally opening my door to, to go her. around, to go uh-huh. around, open the door for her, walk her in, make sure her mother knew she was home, like one of those type deals. And <laughs> it was just dead silent in my truck. And I back out, and nobody said anything. And in my mind, I'm like, "What did I just witness?" So what you're saying is, my girl's got some game. And, and, and you go, Sam. Buddy, of mine goes. Well, there's that. <laughs> and I was like... Makes it even better that there were witnesses. Oh, yeah. It was because like, that's so baller. Oh, she was. Tripping. It's like, take me to spend money on these expensive Garth Brooks tickets. Mm-hmm. And, you know, buy me these $20 drinks. Drop me off at my front door because yeah. I'm going night-night. And I've had way too much <laughs> of those $20 drinks. Yeah, well, when me and Blake's early dates, we went to Hank Williams Jr. Even better. Even better. Yeah, and I, all I know is I opened my eyes and I was in the floorboard and we were at home. Ah! Oh, <laughs> so, the story. And then we're sitting here talking about, I wonder how I'm going to do when my kid gets up. Oh, oh, it was I like, know, Matthew, do I, you tell them? Oh, I'm going to definitely tell them. So I think now that I've gotten one child that has made it successfully through college and survived that experience, she's got that bad age you know, and yes. She's so now it it can be done, but I'm telling you, it's stressful when you. It's worse now because you can see what's going on. You know, you can follow yes. your kids on Instagram and all this stuff, and uh, but I've always been the scary parent. Oh, Samantha takes that. Oh, yeah, like, we had one major coming to Jesus with Skylar when she was 16, and, I mean, it was it was, it was pretty excessive what she did. Over boyfriend? It was or? over a boy. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And Blake had to go tell me to sit down. He was <laughs> like, <laughs> he was like, you need to go sit down and take a breather. <laughs> I just don't feel like I had any room to talk. I was, I was yeah, but see, there was no, like, we weren't broadcasting and cataloging our entire lives for God, the future. If, if if they had that back when I was coming up and you were coming up, there would literally probably be no politicians. We'd all be unemployed. <laughs> like, yeah, we'd have no jobs, yeah. no options oh, for yeah. a future. Just type your name <laughs> in, here's a bunch of videos, but, oh yeah, well... <laughs> Is she on top of the table? They're like, like, do you guys, do you guys live in a tent? Yeah, because my mom did a bunch of stuff a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> but you can look, you can search her on Google. But I mean, right. I, I just, mm, yeah. No, no. That is something though that like kids are being taught very early in high school. You know, what you put out there is going to stay there forever, and you need to think about that now because college and careers. What you know, and future spouses are going to start looking at this stuff now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What are you speaking of now? How's the mortgage business? We're still doing business at a steady clip. I mean, but it's hard. Yeah. I, I mean, the thing is, there's always going to be ups and downs. Yeah. So you just have to, if you see it as an opportunity to learn new stuff and like sharpen yourself for the next time that we have a huge um, market opening, we'll be on top of our game and ready to just climb to that next level. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, if you sit there and get into your head that these are factors obviously beyond anyone's control, all I can do is be the best advocate I can for the people who need my help the most. Just be honest. Look. Exactly. Yeah. Um, because there are a lot of people that are hurting really bad right now. Oh, it's, and it's, it's going to get worse. Like, there's a lot of people that have completely been priced out of affording a home right now. Mm-hmm. And that hurts. 
I've always taken pride in feeling that home ownership is like the basis of building a community, building good schools, building wealth for you as an individual or as a person, you know, yeah. as a family. And it hurts like to have to see people not be able to accomplish that. I told Samantha the other day, I said, I think coming soon it's going to be harder to get home insurance than it will be to get mortgage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and a know. lot of that is like California, oh. the Attorney General said you can't increase those homeowners premiums. Oh, but it's it's so it's so much more than just that. I mean, you've got companies that are literally because we have a lot of contracts, and it's like week after week, one of them is shutting down or right. one, no no new business, and it's now the regulations are so freaking hard. They are. Like you look at it, you're like who made this decision? I know. And then it's hard to look at the client and say, hey, look, but you got you need to be. That's right. That's just who you are, and just say, hey, look, the market is slim. It is. It is super strong. <clears throat> and it, it does, it's, it sucks when you see these agencies or these decisions being passed down that aren't really beneficial. And it's like people who are making these rules have never worked on the streets. Girl, I see it every day. Yeah, so like you're doing things that are costing more money and slowing things down and they're not making things Better. available. That's right. Yeah, well, we'll get through it. Well, um, I appreciate you coming, man. Yeah, We've that. actually been sitting here and talking for an hour, which is maybe a record for me. Really? So, yeah. I'd go another hour. What you want to talk about? <laughs> Let, I got to get a nap first. Okay. <laughs> I miss naps. Me too. They don't nap anymore in kindergarten. Did what? You know no naps. I asked, I asked Nora, I asked what her favorite subject person. was, and she said that it was, uh, she loves arts and crafts, given. I know her mother is. And then her computer time, because they're teaching on the ABCs, and I was doing her homework with her last night, where we put the A's over here and the small, you know, lowercase a over here, and we're like, all right, match them up. And I, and I made a comment, I was like, Nora, my favorite time in school is nap time. How's your nap time? And she's like, we don't get nap time. And it just boom, blew my mind, I'm like, what? That, it, that blows my mind. I wish we still had nap time as an adult. Can you even call it kindergarten anymore? Like, can, can you can you can you cut like lunch breaks in half? Like, what if we yeah, started? Yeah. What if we started lunch as a society eleven to twelve, and nap time was from twelve to one? That's like how Spain does it. Oh, and, it's like oh, uh, Italy. Well, isn't it? Like it's yeah. done three o'clock. It's over. Yeah, they're like, dude, I'm tired. I'm laying down under this tree for a little bit, and <laughs> that's okay with everybody. And that's probably why they have longevity of life. Exactly, and wine. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, look, <laughs> look, people, naps and wine are the key to health. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a glass of red wine a day keeps the doctor away. That's right. Let's go to Italy and look. All so. right. All right. Well, let's go out there. All right, Matt. Yeah. Thanks a bunch.